Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Naresh Mago and with me is Manoj Singh Rana with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates Khel Mahakumbh at Ahmedabad in Gujarat. Prime Minister tells youngsters of the country not to look for any shortcut to success and there's only one mantra for success, long-term planning and continuous commitment, says neither a victory can ever be our last stop nor a defeat. Prime Minister dedicates to the nation a building of Rashtriya Raksha University near Gandhinagar in Gujarat, emphasizes the need to change the image of police and security personnel. India administers over 180 crore doses of COVID vaccine in the country so far. Election Commission announces schedule for by-elections in West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Bihar and Maharashtra. Government launches initiative to empower startups in water sector. EPFO decides to provide 8.1% rate of interest in fiscal year 2021-22. CBSC communicates results of first-term board examination for class 10 to schools. In German Open Badminton, Lakshya Sen to face Viktor Axelsen in semi-final in Berlin this evening. In Women's World Cup, India register a 155-run win over West Indies in Hamilton. And in men's cricket, India all out for 252 runs in their first innings against Sri Lanka in second test match at Bengaluru. As we start the bulletin, we appeal to our listeners to stay safe from COVID-19 by following these four simple steps. Get fully vaccinated, wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi told the youngsters of the country not to look for any shortcut to success and there is only one mantra for success, long-term planning and continuous commitment. He said neither a victory can ever be their last stop nor a defeat. The Prime Minister was speaking after inaugurating the 11th edition of Khel Mahakumbh, which is Gujarat's biggest annual sports event at Sardar Patel Stadium at Ahmedabad this evening. The state-level mega sports program was first launched in 2010 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself when he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat. On the occasion, the Prime Minister has also digitally unveiled Gujarat Sports Policy 2022-2027. to The new policy is aimed to make Gujarat the sports hub of the nation. In this 11th edition of Khel Mahakumbh 2022, more than 47 lakh people have registered for the state-level sports event. Different games will be organized at over 500 venues across the state during the Khel Mahakumbh. Speaking on this occasion, Mr. Modi said, that the seed of Khel Mahakum, sown by him in 2010, has grown into a huge tree and the number of participants has increased from 13 lakh in 2010 to 55 lakh in 2022. Khel Mahakum ke liye ke karan do saal tak Khel Mahakum par break laga raha. Lekin Bhupendra bhai ne जिस भव्यता के साथ इस आयोजन को शुरू किया है उसने युवा खिलाड़ियों को नए जोश से भर दिया है मुझे याद है 12 साल पहले गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री के नाते खेल महाकुंभ की शुरुआत की थी और आज मैं कह सकता हूं जिस सपने का बीज मैंने बोया था आज वटवृक्ष बनता दिखाई दे रहा है the Prime Minister said, from start-up India to stand-up India, from make in India to Atma Nirbhar India and vocal for local, the youth of India has taken up the responsibility of every campaign of New India.
He said he felt proud of the youth of the country who prove India's potential in every field. He said the government started recognizing the talents of the country and giving them all necessary support. He added, despite having talent, our youth used to lag behind due to lack of training and today better training facilities are being given to the players. एक समय था जब खेल जगत में भारत की पहचान केवल एक दो खेलों के भरोसे टिकी थी इस वजह से खेलों से जुड़े संसाधन बढ़ाने स्पोर्ट्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को आधुनिक बनाने पर जितनी प्राथमिकता देनी चाहिए थी वो एक प्रकार से रुक गया था इतना ही नहीं जैसे राजनीति में भाई भतीजावाद बुझ गया है खेल जगत में भी खिलाड़ियों के चयन में पारदर्शिता की कमी भी एक बहुत बड़ा फैक्टर थी उस भंवर से निकालकर भारत के युवा आज आसमान छू रहे हैं Mr Modi said that this is only a beginning and the country will be the strong contenders along with other top nations in the future खेल महाकुंभ के खिलाड़ियों को सहयोग देने की जिम्मेदारी भी सरकार उठा रही है और ये जो लगातार अविराम प्रयास किए गए खिलाड़ियों ने जो साधना की और जब खिलाड़ी प्रगति करता है तो उसके पीछे एक लंबी तपस्या होती है जो संकल्प गुजरात के लोगों ने मिलकर लिया था वो आज दुनिया में apna parcham lehra raha hai earlier in the evening the prime minister held another road show in amdabad city a large number of people gathered on both sides of the road and cheered their leader this afternoon the prime minister dedicated to the nation a new building complex of the rashtriya raksha university at gandhinagar in gujarat by unveiling a plaque the new campus of rashtriya raksha university an institution of national importance is situated at lavad village near gandhinagar The Prime Minister also participated in the first convocation ceremony of the university as the chief guest. The Prime Minister reached Gujarat yesterday. Delivering his convocation address, the Prime Minister said, "The seeds of police reforms have been sown with the launch of the Rashtriya Raksha University in Gujarat." He said police reforms were needed immediately after our independence, but it was neglected for many years. Mr Modi expressed the hope that the university will play a great role in the field of national security and defense that will change the security scenario of the nation the prime minister emphasized the need to change the image of police and security personnel uniform ki izzat badhti hai uske bhitar manavta zinda hoti hai uniform ki himmat badhti hai jab uske andar karuna ka bhav hota hai uniform ki himmat tab badhti hai jab mata aur behno dalit pidit shoshit vanchit ke liye kuch kar guzarne ki aakanksha hai bhitar jagti hai tab ja kar ke uniform ki taakat badhti hai the prime minister paid tribute to mahatma gandhi and those who participated in the dandi march for salt satyagraha that started from the land of gujarat on this day in 1930 delivering his presidential address union home and cooperation minister amit shah said rashtriya raksha university can now expand its activities throughout the country he said the current rashtriya raksha university is the result of prime minister modi's vision when he was the chief minister of gujarat Political activities are on peak in the five states of Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Goa, Manipur and Punjab for the formation of new governments after the announcement of assembly poll results. The BJP has retained power in Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Goa and Manipur while the Aam Aadmi Party has swept the Punjab assembly polls. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawant today submitted his resignation to Governor P.S. Sridharan from his post, paving the way for the formation of a new government in the state. The Governor accepted the resignation of Mr. Sawant and requested him to continue as the caretaker Chief Minister along with his Cabinet till further arrangements are made. Mr. Sawant said the formation of a new government will be decided after a visit of the BJP's central team to Goa. He said once they come to Goa the legislators party meeting will be held and rest of decisions will follow soon in the 40 member Goa assembly the BJP has won 20 seats Aam Aadmi Party leader Bhagwant Mann today met Punjab governor Banwari Lal Purohit to stake a claim for the formation of a new government in Punjab 
the 48-year-old comedian-turned-politician was elected the leader of the AAP Legislature Party at a meeting held at Mohali near Chandigarh last evening. The AAP has won 92 seats in the 117-member Punjab Assembly. Speaking outside the Raj Bhavan in Chandigarh after meeting the governor, Mr. Bhagwant Man said the swearing-in ceremony will be held at Khatkar Kala, the native village of Bhagat Singh, at 12.30 p.m. on the 16th of March. In Manipur, former Education Minister and BJP leader S. Rajin Singh was appointed as a pro tem speaker by the governor today. The formation of the new government would happen in the coming few days. He will take the oath tomorrow morning at the Raj Bhavan in Imphal. Mr. Singh won the Lamsung Assembly constituency in the recently concluded Assembly election. Senior BJP leaders will reach Imphal tomorrow for finalization of the new government. The BJP got 32 seats and has support of an independent candidate so far in the 60-member Assembly. The Election Commission today announced by polls to one parliamentary constituency and four assembly constituencies in West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Bihar and Maharashtra. In West Bengal, the by-election will be held for Asansol parliamentary constituency and Bali Gonj assembly seat. By polls will also be held for Kheragar assembly constituency in Chhattisgarh, Bochaha seat in Bihar and Kolapur North assembly constituency in Maharashtra. The Election Commission has said the last date of nomination for these seats will be the 24th of March and the last date of withdrawal of candidature will be the 28th of March. The polling will be held on the 12th of Mar- April and the date of counting of votes is the 16th of April. The second part of the budget session of Parliament will begin from Monday. During the second part of the session, there will be 19 sittings and Parliament is also set to return to its normal functioning schedule. Both Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha will sit from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The decision has been taken in the wake of decline in COVID-19 cases in the country. In view of the third wave of the pandemic, the two houses worked in shifts in the first phase. Both the houses will continue to use their chambers and galleries during the second leg of the budget session. This time, the Rajya Sabha will get 19 hours of additional business time over the earlier schedule. The second part of the budget session is scheduled to conclude on the 8th of next month. The budget session of Parliament is resuming after a month-long recess during which the department-related parliamentary standing committees examined the demands for grants of various ministries and departments. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu is likely to give an account of the working of the eight standing committees of Rajya Sabha in the House on Monday. Here is more from our correspondent. Several important bills are likely to be taken up during the second phase of the budget session of Parliament. These include Finance Bill 2022, Competition Amendment Bill, Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority Amendment Bill, National Dental Commission Bill, Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022. The budget session of Parliament began on 31st January with President Ramnath Kovind address. The first phase of the Parliament session lasted till 11th February and a total of 10 sittings were held during this period. During the first phase, discussion were held on the motion of thanks to the President Address and the Union Budget 2022-23. The work productivity of Rajya Sabha was more than 101% during the session, while the productivity of Lok Sabha was recorded 121%. Bhupendra Singh, AIR News, New Delhi. You're listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates Khel Mahakumbh at Ahmedabad in Gujarat. Prime Minister tells youngsters of the country not to look for any shortcut to success and there is only one mantra for success, long-term planning and continuous commitment, says neither a victory can ever be our last stop nor a defeat. Prime Minister dedicates to the nation a building of Rashtriya Raksha University near Gandhinagar in Gujarat emphasizes the need to change the image of police and security personnel. India administers over 180 crore doses of COVID vaccine in the country so far. Election Commission announces schedule for by-elections in West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Bihar and Maharashtra. Government launches initiative to empower startups in water sector. EPFO decides to provide 8.1% rate of interest in fiscal year 2021-22. CBSE communicates results of first-term board examination for class 10th to schools. 
in German Open Badminton, Lakshya Sen to face Victor Axelsson in semi-final in Berlin this evening. In Women's World Cup, India register a 155-run win over the West Indies in Hamilton. And in men's cricket, India all out for 252 runs in their first innings against Sri Lanka in second test match at Bengaluru. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो Over 180 crore doses of COVID vaccine have been administered in the country so far. In a tweet today, Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia said the world's largest vaccination drive is scaling new heights under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership. Appreciating the public participation in this mega drive, he said COVID-appropriate behavior must be followed even after getting vaccinated. Meanwhile, the country reported over 3,000 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Over 5,000 COVID patients have recovered during the same period. The national recovery rate stands at 98.71%. The government will select 100 startups across the country to empower sustainable economic growth and generate employment opportunities in the water or used water sector. This was stated by Housing and Urban Affairs Minister Hardeep Singh Puri after launching India Water Pitch Pilot Scale startup challenge under the ministry's atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation amrit 2.0 in new delhi today mr puri also added that his ministry will select startups through this startup challenge and provide 20 lakh rupees to each startup as funding support as well as mentorship on the occasion mr puri emphasized on the important role being played by the startups and assured them of full and active support from the government The Employees Provident Fund organization EPFO has decided to provide 8.1% rate of interest to its subscribers in the fiscal year 2021-22. The Apex decision body of EPFO took the decision today in the 230th meeting of the Central Board of Trustees at Guwahati. The Labor and Employment Ministry has said that returns on EPFO's investments are higher even when the yields have been steadily coming down in the past decade. The Central Board of Secondary Education CBSC has communicated performances of the first term of class 10th board examination to the schools. The board today said only scores in theory have been communicated as internal assessment or practical scores are already available with the schools. In a circular the board has said the first term examinations were conducted as per schedule. It said in case the students missed their first term exam due to covid or because of the participation in national and international sporting events or olympiads no performance of the first term exam is being communicated. It added the final performance of the students will be assessed based on performances in the second term examination. The CBSC said No mark sheet come passing certificate is being issued now only one mark sheet come passing certificate will be issued after the second term examination to bring parity with the previous results the board added that this will be comprising of total marks of both the terms as weighted decided of the first and second term examination and accordingly final performances will be calculated The 15th round of China India core commander level meeting was held at Chushul Moldo border meeting point on the Indian side yesterday. The defense ministry said the two sides carried forward their discussions from the previous round held on 12th January this year for the resolution of the relevant issues along the line of actual control LAC in the western sector. During the meeting both sides had a detailed exchange of views keeping with the guidance provided by the state leaders to work for resolution of the remaining issues at the earliest both sides reaffirmed that such a resolution would help restore peace and tranquility along the LAC in the western sector and facilitate progress in bilateral relations 
Four Nepali nationals have reached Nepal from Ukraine through India. Prime Minister of Nepal, Sher Bahadur Deoba, thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Indian government for the assistance in repatriating Nepali nationals through Operation Ganga. United Nations Security Council members have accused Russia of spreading false information that Ukraine is developing biological weapons. The Security Council met yesterday to discuss Russia's claim that Ukraine is operating biological weapons laboratories with the U.S.'s support. The meeting was convened at Russia's request. The UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Nakamitsu Izumi, told the meeting that she is aware of media reports regarding allegations of biological weapons programs. But she added the United Nations is not aware of any biological weapons programs. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has said the government will give 10 lakh rupees to the families of the deceased who lost their lives in the fire incident in Gokulpuri area of the national capital. In a tweet today, Mr. Kejriwal said 5 lakh rupees will be given to the families of the deceased children and 25,000 rupees to those whose houses were destroyed in fire. Seven people, including a 13-year-old child, died, and around 60 tenements were burnt down in the fire that broke out in the shanties of North East Delhi's Gokulpuri area early this morning. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over the tragic fire incident. Muraji Desai National Institute of Yog under Ministry of Ayush is organizing Yog Mahotsav 2022 tomorrow. Ayush Minister Sarbananda Sonawal will inaugurate the event to commemorate 100 days countdown to International Day of Yoga. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa. Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. Long live! Long live! Long live! 12th March is the historic day when Gandhiji started his famous Dandi March in 1930. The 24-day march from March 12th to April 5th, 1930 marked the inauguration of the civil disobedience movement. The Dandi March was the most significant organized movement against the British Raj after the non-cooperation movement of the 1920s. There was great excitement in Ahmedabad on the eve of the march. A large crowd gathered around Sabarmati Ashram and stayed through the night. Gandhiji gathered a group of 78 men. There were 31 marchers from Gujarat, 13 from Maharashtra and others from the United Provinces, Kerala, Punjab and Sindh with Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Karnataka, Bengal, Bihar and Orissa sending one each. The diversity was social as well as geographical. From among the chosen marchers, there were many students and Khadi workers. Several were the so-called untouchables, a few Muslims and one Christian. They started out at 6.30 a.m. amidst a large group of people, cheering them all along with flowers and greetings. On their way, they stopped at a number of villages where Gandhi addressed large crowds. Gandhi reached Dandi village on April the 5th. Next day on the 6th of April, he proceeded to the sea where he picked up lumps of natural salt lying in a small pit. Men need salt as he needs air and water. This salt comes from the Indian Ocean. Let every Indian claim it as his right. While picking up the salt, Gandhiji said, With this, I'm shaking the foundations of the British Empire. My advice is that the workers should everywhere manufacture salt to make use of it and to instruct the villagers to do so. 
The act was symbolic but was hugely covered by the press and was the beginning of several other acts of civil disobedience in other parts of India. The Dandi March and its effect shook up the British government. We also remember the nationalist leader and the first chief minister of Maharashtra, Yashwant Rao Chavhan, who was born on the 12th of March 1913 in Sangli district of Maharashtra. As a schoolboy in Karad, he was fined for his participation in the non-cooperation movement. In 1932, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison for hoisting the Indian flag in Satara. During this period, he came in contact with Swami Ramananda Bharti, Dholappa Bhaurao, Appa Sahib and Govind Kruparam. During his college years, Chavhan was involved in many social activities and was closely associated with the Congress Party and its leaders such as Jawaharlal Nehru, Sadar Patel and Keshav Rao Jade. Chavhan was one of the delegates at the Bombay session of the Indian National Congress in 1942 that gave the call for Quit India. He spent around two years in jail for his participation in the Quit India movement. Post-independence, Yashwant Rao Chavhan was the first chief minister of the undivided state of Bombay when the two new states of Gujarat and Maharashtra were created in 1960 Chavhan became the chief minister of the new state of Maharashtra. He took several steps to develop the state. He passed the Cooperative Societies Act and brought industries to backward areas, thus laying the stepping stones for a modern, industrialized state. Yashwant Rav Chavhan held many important portfolios in the central government. He served as the Minister of Defense, Minister of Home Affairs, Minister of Finance and External Affairs Minister. The elimination of foreign military bases from and preservation of peace scene in the Indian Ocean. This is not so for any reasons of expediency, but of principle and deep conviction. India's policy on in the Indian Ocean is a logical and natural outcome of its policy of peaceful coexistence and non-alignment. He also served as the fifth Deputy Prime Minister of India from July 1979 till January 1980. Yashwant Rao Chavhan died of a heart attack on the 25th of November 1984 in Delhi. AIR pays tribute to the great leader. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. In German Open Badminton, India's Lakshasen will face Victor Axelsen of Denmark in semi-final of men's singles in Berlin this evening. In the quarter-final yesterday, Laksh beat compatriot H.S. Pranoy. In the ICC Women's World Cup, India defeated the West Indies by 155 runs at the Seddon Park in Hamilton to register their second win of the tournament today. Chasing a victory target of 318 runs, the West Indies were all out at 162 runs in 40.3 overs. In men's cricket, Sri Lanka were 81 for 5 in their first innings against India in the second test at Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bengaluru when reports last came in. Earlier, India were all out for 252 runs in their first innings. The day-night test is being played with a pink ball and a full-capacity crowd. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have mainly clear sky. Leh and Gilgit are likely to have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Guwahati, Imphal, Shillong, Aizol, Kohima, Itanagar and Gangtok will have a mainly clear sky. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates Khel Mahakumb at Ahmedabad in Gujarat, tells youngsters of the country not to look for any shortcut to success and there is only one mantra for success, long-term planning and continuous commitment. Prime Minister dedicates to the nation a building of Rashtriya Raksha University near Gandhi Nagar in Gujarat. India administers over 180 crore doses of COVID vaccine in the country so far. Election Commission announces schedule for by-elections in West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Bihar and Maharashtra. Government launches initiative to empower startups in water sector. EPFO decides to provide 8.1% rate of interest in fiscal year 2021-22. CBSC communicates results of first-term board examination for class 10 to schools. In German Open Badminton, Lakshya Sen to face Victor Axelsen in semi-final in Berlin this evening. 
In Women's World Cup, India registered 155 run win over West Indies in Hamilton. And in men's cricket, India all out for 252 runs in their first innings against Sri Lanka in second test match at Bengaluru. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website newsonair.gov.in and news on AIR app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.